Smoke alarms are the most common and effective layer of protection you can have against fire in the home. A properly operating, properly located smoke alarm will allow you and your family those valuable seconds to get out of the home safely in the event of a fire. In this home, we're going to take a look at the proper quantity, location, and types of smoke alarms for your average family home. This home has a smoke alarm in the living room, as well as one down the hallway by the bedrooms. Let's go take a look. This smoke alarm is in a good location. It's mounted out in the hallway, on the ceiling, outside of all the bedrooms. Ideally, we'd like to have a smoke alarm in each bedroom, but this is acceptable. It's also acceptable to mount these four to five inches down from the ceiling on the wall. Now, let's take a look and make sure this one works properly. We want to test the battery in the horn. Now, we want to make sure we test the battery once a month, and we want to replace the battery every year. Now, there are long-lasting lithium batteries that will give you extra life, but you can't let your guard down. You still need to test them on a monthly basis. We also want to visually inspect the smoke alarm to make sure there's no cobwebs, dust buildup. If there are, we can just vacuum those off. Now, this smoke alarm checks out fine. Let's go take a look at the one in the living room. Now, both the smoke alarms in this house are battery operated. Some alarms are hardwired into the electrical system of the house with a battery as a backup in case of a power failure. You still need to test those on a monthly basis and replace those every year. Now, let's take a look at the smoke alarm in this room. Make sure that it works properly. Now this smoke alarm is in a good location. It's in the main area of the house where all the activity takes place. It's high up on the ceiling and it's not too close to the kitchen. Now that may sound kind of strange, but when we talk about nuisance alarms, you'll get the point. If you've ever burned a piece of toast or had a frying pan get too hot and set off your smoke alarm, you know what a nuisance that can be. That happens to you a few times. The tendency is to remove the battery completely to disable it. That's why it's a good idea to mount this a little ways away from the kitchen to avoid what we call nuisance alarms. Now this house is protected pretty well. It's got two smoke alarms, one in the hallway by the bedrooms, one out in the living room with the main activity area of the house, but they are outdated. We recommend you replace your alarms completely every 10 years. And there is better technology out there. So we're gonna take a run to the hardware store and see what we can find. Shopping for smoke alarms can be confusing. As you see here, you have a lot of options and it's important to know what you're buying. The tendency is to buy whatever's cheapest, and that's not always right. We have prices ranging from $5 up to $40. And as you can see, all the packages look the same. What we want you to look for is an alarm that has dual sensor technology. And what that means is it has both photoelectric and ionization type detectors. This one's virtually two alarms in one. The photoelectric sensor responds to cooler smoldering fires, and the ionization responds to fast-moving flaming fires. And since you never know what kind of fire you're going to have in your home, the ultimate in protecting you and your family is an alarm with dual sensor technology. And that's why we're taking both of these today. Okay, we've replaced both the smoke alarms in this house with brand new ones with a dual sensing technology. It's a lot better protected. Now, we've talked a lot about testing your battery once a month and replacing it once a year. We can't stress that enough, whatever kind of smoke alarm you have. Let's make sure this one works.